What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from Pattaya City, Thailand. Let's do it. All right, Island Hoppers, we're 62 miles southeast of Bangkok along the Gulf of Thailand right here in Pattaya City, one of the biggest party destinations in all of Thailand. And as you can tell right now, we're going all across Thailand to really show you guys what to expect when you visit this beautiful country. In this travel guide of Pattaya City, we're going to take you to the Sanctuary of Truth, which is an incredible temple. We're going to take you to see some elephants, do some island hopping, also show you guys Walking Street and some of the other areas where the party just really happens every single night, no matter what. And here we are starting out right on Pattaya Beach. This is actually where you can get jet ski riding, banana boat rides parasailing you can also catch a speedboat and do island hopping from here all right we rented this boat here for 3,000 baht that's around $55 we're going out to Kolon and back it'll be about a three-hour journey let's do it and correction 3,000 baht is actually around $80 we got this speedboat for about three or four hours and it was a private tour with two people plus the driver I thought it was a pretty good price considering uh, everything that we got to see, which you're about to see when we go out on the island hopping tour. And this island that we're arriving at is actually called Koh Larn. It takes around 20 to 30 minutes to get out here from Patia City. And when you get here, you'll have more seclusion, better beaches than you get in actual mainland. In fact, if you're going to rent a jet ski, I would say do it out here instead of in Patia City because of the views and the better beaches. And that's going to cost you around a thousand baht for about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on who you're talking to and how good of a negotiator you are. And no need to worry about drinks or lunch or dinner when you get out here because they do have restaurants in basically every beach you're gonna go to. On Koh Lan Island, which is around about 10 beaches in total, there's also another coral island right nearby where you can do some scuba diving or snorkeling. And the water is calm enough to do stand-up paddle boarding. going on guys we're out here swimming clear water very clear water on Kolon. and we definitely took advantage of the opportunity to do some snorkeling and some swimming at this location because it was so perfect if you go to the other side of the island they have another beach but it's not quite as clear as this side right here and in case you're wondering the name of this beach it is called Newall Beach N-U-A-L look it up on the map this is the more relaxing side of Kolon. And after a nice swim, we decided to get some food before we moved on to the other beach. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And now we're off to Tawan Beach, but I will say if you wanted to get a private boat, the benefit of doing that is you can do beach hopping all around the island. Like I said, there's around 10 different beaches that you can check out on the way around the island to the big beach. Or you could just get a jet ski with your friend for an hour and do the beach hopping on a jet ski. So now we've made it to the big beach here on Koh Lan, so we're gonna do some exploring and see what's going on over here. This particular beach is a bit more crowded and there's a little bit more pollution in the water. It's not too bad, but I just wanted to point that out if you guys are trying to figure out what beach you wanna visit when you come out here to Koh Lan. And getting one of those see-through kayaks can be a good idea. You could also possibly rent a moped and go around the island, although I haven't done that one yet. All right, now that we're done out here on the beach, I'll take the opportunity to remind you, if you're coming to Thailand, you're gonna wanna subscribe to this channel to see our other videos. We just did Bangkok, we're going up to Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai, but let's keep this tour going. Oh, I almost forgot, we are going out to Phuket, Koh Phi Phi, Krabi, and Koh Samui, and Koh Tao. 
On the way back, we saw quite a few fishing vessels and a cool barge right there in Patio City Bay. But what we're gonna do now is actually head over to one of the coolest temples I've seen in all of the world, the Sanctuary of Truth right here in Pattaya City. All right guys, we've made it to the Sanctuary of Truth. This is a beautiful wooden temple. We're gonna go walk around there and see what it looks like inside. It is 100% made of wood. Yeah, so you have to wear one of these helmets when you go inside because it's still under construction. And if you do come down here to Pattaya City, I would say put this at the top of the list of things to see and do. In fact, if you're just thinking of visiting Thailand, this might just be one of those top tier temples to add to the list also. And keep in mind, everything that you're looking at is hand carved out of wood, which makes it even more impressive. So the building here began construction in 1981 and it is still going. It is still being carved. They're outside right now carving the statues that will be placed in here. But what this place really represents is a diversity of Eastern philosophy. They have Khmer, which is Cambodian. They have Chinese, they have Thailand, they have uh, Indian. So it's a multitude of different Eastern philosophies that you'll find in here. And the overarching main message that this temple really speaks on is that you come into this world with nothing and you leave with nothing. So everything that matters the most is how you treat other people. So this pillar here represents a society of generosity, but it's still being worked on, but that's a good message for people to take hold of. And you can see the duality here. You have a society of rudeness, and then you have a society of giving and caring for others, and that's what these carvings represent. This is the negative and this is the positive. And you can see this one here is an example of a finished piece of work. And this one represents a society of mutual respect, a society of politeness and not arrogance, a society of justice. And as you go around here, you'll see a message about the inter-cooperation between humans and nature, the natural world. But this one right here represents reciprocity, which basically means that you reciprocate with the humans around you and the nature. So you, it's a give and take. If you cut down a tree, you plant a tree. This idea right here. And after a good time walking around the Sanctuary of Truth and getting really grounded spiritually, now we're gonna head to the party zone of Walking Street and show you the nightlife. Here we are at Walking Street in Patia City. Let's check it out at night. And as you can tell, there is a difference between night and day here on Walking Street. You walk around in the daytime, you're like, oh, okay. But you come back at night, it lights up. Crazy place, I'll tell you what. And this was one of the first places I went where the lights and the sound was really making my mind kind of numb. I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to be here too long because it was so loud and so bright.
And as you can see, there's a variety of different people who come down here. You'll see Europeans, you'll see Asians, you'll see people from America, you'll see people from all over the world right here hanging out on this walking street. Men and women, couples, married, honeymooners. And sometimes people even bring their kids down here, which I would say is not advisable, especially after dark. But hey, if bringing your kids to a party place like this is your thing, then go for it. One of the cool things they do have down here is Muay Thai fighting, as you'll see right here. And these guys really rock each other. I mean, this is not staged. They're really hitting hard blows onto each other. I'm like, do they do this every night and take this kind of beating? And aside from Walking Street, there's another area called Tree Town, and it's a whole other party area. So after a wild night, it was time to do some adventure activities. So we went out to a place to ride some ATVs. They also have some elephants where we actually feed them. We don't actually ride them here, but if you wanted to, you could, I suppose. And they give you a hairnet. So when you wear the helmet, clean, keep it clean, clean. Oh, yeah. We're stopping away from these guys to go by, and now we're going to go deeper into the jungle. Well, you never know what you're going to find in the jungles of Thailand. Could it be a tiger or an elephant? Or maybe just a cow. There's no tigers or no wild elephants out here in this part of Thailand. So we bought these uh, bananas here to feed the elephants. Uh, 100 baht for a whole bag. And this kind of vehicle you can see here is like a pickup truck with a covered roof. It's like the patio version of a tuk-tuk, I would say. And now we've made it to the Big Buddha. You can go up to the top of the hill here and walk around this temple.
And I'm sure by now you're wondering what my accommodation looked like. Well, I stayed in three different hotels. The first night I stayed here at the Bayview, which is actually a really nice hotel. Great proximity to the beach for $55 a night per room. And in case you're wondering about other forms of entertainment in the evening besides going out and partying in crazy chaotic environments, they also have a wide variety of food cuisine here. I ate at a Benihana's, I ate at a Hooters, I ate at many different restaurants with great international cuisine, also local cuisine, plenty of street food vendors around here for you to get that food. I would say in a weird way, Patia City has something for everyone. They have head, neck, and shoulder massages. They have kebab. They have Chinese food, Japanese food. They have Thai food. They have American food. They have jewelry stores. They have plenty of dentist shops. I think people come here for medical procedures. And what we're gonna do now is simply walk along Patia Road and show you what it looks like out here. So I'm gonna get a haircut here at the L'Oreal Professional Hair Center. And boy, when it rains in Patia, it pours, as you can see. see. Actually, every day we were here, it rained at some point throughout the day. You would get some sunshine, and then all of a sudden an ominous gray cloud would come in and just absolutely dump rain for an hour or two. Nice haircut. For 250 baht, I uh, got a nice shave and clean up, and that's around seven or eight bucks. And Patia City, just like Bangkok, does have many big malls, including Terminal 21 and the one we're walking around right now, the Royal Garden Plaza right here on the beach. I usually started off my day here with breakfast at this mall plaza area. Another thing to do is go to Frost, Magical Ice of Siam. This is an indoor uh, snow palace. So if you guys have never seen snow before, come here. And since I've seen snow before, I didn't need to go inside here, but it's really a cool place to see ice sculptures and bring the kids, I would say. Anyway, where we're at now is going to be the tower, this building I saw while out on the boat and I said, hey, let's go over there and check this place out. But when I got there, I realized it's very old and dated. Well, we're here at Patia Park. It looks like a water park down here and an amusement park over here with a big tower. Might be a place to bring the kids, but the water park seemed all right. The rest of it was probably not worth checking out. The area we're walking around here is actually called South Pattaya, but it's also Jombian Beach. Uh, it seems like a kind of dead place, really. It's a little bit run down. 
I don't know if COVID did that or what, but compared to North Padia, this place is uh, more relaxed, I'll say that. And on that note, we're going to conclude this episode of Pattaya Beach. You guys can check those links right here and you can watch Bangkok or a video from Phuket and see you on the next one.